we said, uh, I think it was two or three weeks ago, that um, there's three things as a believer you want to be sure uh, that you're doing. Three things as a believer you want to be sure that you're walking in. And if you are walking in these three things, we said that uh, it's just a matter of time that things will come together for you. Amen? Things will come together for you. Now, uh, as I was looking at this passage of Scripture, uh, it kind of dawned on me that uh, most of the time, uh, God's people are doing one out of the three. But um, we had a... Um, uh, one of our people stand up and give a testimony. I don't know if you remember, about a month and a half, two months ago, and she said that um, she had been doing uh, the praying and she had been doing the tithing. Uh, she hadn't been doing the tithing, but then when she put it all together, that's when breakthrough came. That's when breakthrough came. Now, uh, so uh, most of all God's people do one of the three. But I, I, I really want you to pay attention. And, and for those who do all three, I guarantee you, if I said are all needs met, both hands will go up. Because it's, it's the way of God. Amen? Now, remember, in the kingdom of God, it's just like... Um, uh, of course, the kingdom is the greatest kingdom, but there are principles in the spirit that are kind of like synonymous with the principles in the natural, right? If you, for the most part, get your education, and then if you um, go and move into purpose, that means your God-given uh, calling. And then you begin to really work in your purpose. You will see manifestation. Yeah. We see even people who didn't know the Lord. You know, start young. They, they grab their purpose of like uh, uh, Michael Jackson. Okay, everybody knows Michael Jackson. Now I'm getting all spiritual. He was just Michael Jackson. Y'all was dancing yesterday. <laughs> uh, but you know, you see people who uh, they cultivated uh, what they had, their gifts early, and they just blew up. It just, it just happened for them. Amen? So, it says, and I'm going to give you these three things. You ready for them? Yeah. It says, when you give, when you pray, and when you fast. Uh-oh. Now, now, some people don't, they don't die, they don't give offerings, you know. And, and you know, I don't, I don't belabor that because uh, many times giving is based on your relationship with the Lord and how grateful you are. Now, if you, you know, if you, you know, some of us ugly guys like myself, you know, we come out of that element of darkness, and you almost know what to do. You just do the opposite of what you was doing. You know? You were still when you started giving. Some people, they just stay in the middle. I wasn't no thief. You probably got don't even know. Come on. I didn't say this quiet. I said this. We were out God, but we won't get you know, we, you know, we all up on our high horse about we, we ain't, we ain't rob nobody. You know, I don't rob people. Worst thing is to rob God. He owns everything. Make it you plain. breathe in his air, you walking on his real estate. Make it plain. Amen. You know? If your body is his tongue. I mean, he could shut it down anytime he wants, but he don't. He says above all things, my desire is that you prosper and be in hell. But the word of God says, it doesn't say you should. It didn't say that if you, it says when you give, when you 
pray and when you fast. Yeah. Now, uh, I think fasting, you know, we're, 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 Spirit of God is dealing with me. I mean, we fast all the time. All the time. I got to the point where I was ashamed because, you know, we used to do liquids only. You know, now we do no meats, no sweets. You know, but you know, so are we all. You know, I remember, you know, a double the fast. I need a meat. You, know? <laughs> you start fasting, boy. You, you know, so now your breath don't smell so well. You know, he said, no, you're supposed to be separate. You separate yourself. And I sure enough, if I don't knock somebody over, you play like that. <laughs> but my point is, the Bible says, when you give. I mean, this should be, that, that, that should be a part of your Christian life. Giving. Amen? Then it says, when you pray. Mm -hmm. When you do. Not if you do. When you do. Mm -hmm. And then he says, when you fast. Mm -hmm. So Wednesday, of course, is going to be our, our fast day. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. And, and, and try to go without. Amen? You can take a... Uh, you know, maybe maybe that'd be the day you take your little uh, boost or whatever, you know, little supplement. But try to go as far as you can or, you know, do your one meal. But start somewhere. Amen. And we want to we wanna keep this going until Jesus comes. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, I got to take my medicine. Take your medicine. I'm going to not take your medicine. Amen. But you keep on giving. You keep on uh, pray in the right way, you know, good. and there's really no prayer unless you pray in the Word. Some people pray and all they doing is, you know, uh, reiterating the problem. They worry themselves. You know, when you come out of prayer, you say, hallelujah! You know, folks come out of prayer, they more depressed than when they were. Because all you did was tell the Lord what was wrong. He already knows what's wrong. He wants you to get in agreement with what the Word says, what is right. Prayer is not a complaining session. It's a session where I'm getting in agreement with God. Amen. If I'm infirmed in my body, I go to the Lord and I say, Lord, I thank you that your word says I'm healed. Now you're going to have to give me clarity. You're going to have to give me understanding. You're going to have to bring the revelation of how this works into my life because I got pain everywhere. I'm, I'm just feeling dysfunctional and I can't my way, but I'm going to declare by your stripes I was healed because that's what your word says, and I'm in agreement, even though I can't see it. Amen. The Lord told the, the man who's, who's, whose son was he, he was throwing himself in the fire, he was throwing himself into the waters, and, and the, uh, the man told Jesus, I gotta bring him out of the fire, and I, I gotta bring, jump in the water and bring him out of the lake. He said, but if you can, um, you know, I brought him to your disciples and, and they couldn't get it done. He said, but if you can. He said, what do you mean if I can? He said, all things are possible if you believe. And then the man takes it a little further. He said, Lord, I believe. Mm -hmm. Now help my unbelief. Yeah. Clean up for me what I don't understand. Uh -huh. And then the boy was made home. Jesus cast the spirit out the boy, and the boy was made whole. Somebody say, when you give. When you give. That really ain't going well. Somebody say, when you give. When you give. No matter when you give. When you, give. When you pray. When you pray. And when you fast. When you fast. Complete, the complete the cycle. Of discipleship. Of discipleship. True discipleship says. I am going to walk in a giving disposition. Now, I believe the minimum should be 10%, but I'm not going to argue with nobody. Amen. You know? And many times we judge people on what they have, but we don't judge their hearts. Amen. You know what they get. Amen. You know what they sacrifice. You look at them, where they get that, where they get that, why they get that, where they get that, is they stealing? No. You don't judge a man's uh, harvest. Until you know what they get. Some people just give more than others. Some people just sacrifice more than 
I had, a, I had a very close person to me, but I don't give money, but I, I work around the church extra. I said, well, you, 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 you ain't gonna get money. Uh -oh. I know that's right. Go ahead. That's not the way God look at it. That's right. I'm not gonna give money, but I'll be around and you might be in the way. You might need to go home. If you don't have a really sweet disposition and you want to be sweet to everybody and you want to be a blessing to everybody and you want to, you know, you want to speak good over, you know, folks, well, you don't need to be here all the time. You need to go to service and then it's too late. Until you can learn that, 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 that hospitable way. The Bible says that God's people should be given to And then you act up in the house of God and wonder why you can't get no favor when you're out of here. I know that's right. You done talk down the saints, you done talk down the pastor, you done talk down everybody, and then you get out of the world, and they come, you, know, you pay the bill right now, or you'll pay the That's right. Talk about it. No favor. None. You don't get none, you don't get none. Then you think for crying, and they say, ooh, hallelujah. Uh-huh. I got favor over here, I got favor over there. I went down, they fixed my car for free. He said, they don't need to be lying. You got to come up in the ranks to get some of that favor. Right. Are y'all with me? Yes. This is not a condemnation That's message. Right. I'm just trying to set things in order That's because right. so many folk really don't have the, the, the wisdom That's flowing. That's good. It says, when you give. And you give, not just to receive, but that's the foundation of breaking up the stony ground of your heart because man in and of himself is selfish. Amen. Get my money. Uh -huh. Work hard for my money. I did up the time last week. <laughs> Where's it going? Pass over three quarters. Instead of saying, how much do we give? Right, right. You know, what does it seem like? Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know? See, before you judge a person's heart, she got another. How oh, she? She got a pink band. <laughs> what do you say she got that? She working for that, though. What's that? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you know that? But, you know? <laughs> You, you don't know how many people she gave. Right, right. You just looking at the pink bands. You know, you you just looking at the things from the natural. You know, and let, let me just tell you a little something here. If you allow the devil to make you skeptical, right. you gonna cut a big part of your heart out. Wow. You better be smart, and they better need you at your job because you gonna cut yourself out of a lot of pain. Uh -huh. Go ahead, Pastor. That's good. My Lord. Well, hey, we do good to everybody. But especially those who are of the household of faith. That's we right. do good to everybody. Uh -huh. Somebody say, when you give, when you, give, when you, pray, when you pray, and when you fast, when you now you're walking in your discipleship. One out of the three, you're going to be lacking. Right. Two out of the three, you're almost there. Right. Three out of the three, you're going to hit a bullseye. Right. You know, <laughs> you know I, I was uh, telling myself, you know, because sometimes I've been getting back on the fast, you know. And I told myself the other day, I said, you know what? I, I just threw the medicine away. I went to the doctor and I said, yeah, I just threw the away. Now don't you throw yours. I know that's right. <laughs> make it, make it plain. Yeah. Don't, don't, you know. And, and, I'm not, and I'm not saying this as a post. I'm just saying, you know what I told myself? You get back on that fasting way that you used to be, and you'll cut this weight, and, and your metabolic system will fall in line, and you won't need 
That's why I told myself. That's right. Amen. Amen. You know, these temples are made to run a certain way. We eat too much, and we when we don't give, and we get these attitudes, and these things attack us. Uh huh. Come on. You know.
even on passing television. We talk about food. I'm fasting television. I'm fasting Facebook. We don't need to be on that anyway. I have folk broke. You got your time all the way over there. Well, I got to see what they're doing. Well, that's, that, that's why you laughing. And everybody else's business. All right. I'm trying to preach. This is just the way this thing is coming out. I mean, does it really make sense? You over here on something that has no profit to you, and you always get there. Lord have mercy. That's just another word for saying you a busybody without talking to anybody. So, let's go over here to, uh, oh, let's, let's, let's just come to here. <laughs> I'm going to give you three things that giving does for you. Uh, we're not going to get to praying and fasting. I'm just going to give you these three things and we're going to cut it off. I can see some of you are already there. Somebody said he was excavation. No excavation. Well, you get some inspiration, you start doing. Amen. That's right. That's good. Yeah. I told the guy one time in my life, and I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't tell him. We had one of the parents in the daycare, and they were just they came to pick up the child, and they said, uh, I don't know, maybe just talking to get, get to get to little child, and uh, it was a, a man. He's a black man. Big black man. And he said what he was going to do tomorrow when he got to work. I'm going to tell him this. I'm going to tell him that. It just wasn't, it just wasn't mixing with my spirit, right? But yeah, yeah, it felt like you had the answer, but you really didn't have the relationship with the person to tell them what you wanted to tell them. And after what happened, happened, what you thought was going to happen, you kind of felt bad because you didn't tell me along. Yeah. He said, I'm going to go there tomorrow and I'm going to tell him that. I'm going to tell him that. I'm not taking this. I'm not taking that. And I'm thinking, that's not, no, that's not the way you handle them. <laughs> so the next week he comes in. Says, well, my daughter won't be eating daycare for a while. <laughs> and what happened? They let me go. I mean, you know, you ain't gonna be telling folk what to do, what you not gonna do with your big black self. Amen. That's right. I mean, I mean okay. Maybe black don't have nothing to do with it. But they need to. Who you talking to? Some folks get intimidated just by us being here. That long talking. Y'all um, gonna come up high. I promise I have. Giving. Giving sets you up for victory in personal battles. That you not even supposed to be in. Let's turn over here to Genesis chapter 14. You remember the Lord told Abram, He said, I want you to take yours. And uh, Lot really wasn't supposed to be included. But he took him anyway. And then he had to bail him out. Every time. And so let's pick up. Uh, this Genesis 14 uh, in verse 10. I'm going to read it from another translation just to give you a little clarity. It says, Now the valley of Siddim was full of tar pits. And as the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled, they fell into them. But the remainder of the kings who survived, 
fled to the hill country. Then the victors took all the possessions of Sodom and Gomorrah, all their food, supplies, provisions, and left. And they also took captive Lot, Abram's nephew, his possessions, and left. For he was living in Sodom. Then the survivor who had escaped from the invading forces on the other side of Jordan came and told Abram the Hebrew. Now he was living, now he was living by the oaks of Mamre the Amorite, the brother of Eshcol, the brother of Anan. They were allies of Abram. And when Abram heard that Lot, his nephew, had been captured, he armed and led out his trained men, born in his own house, 318, and went to pursue as far as north of Dan. He divided his forces against them by night, he and his servants, and attacked it and defeated them, and pursued them as far as Hoboth, which is north of Damascus. And he brought back all the goods, and also brought back his nephew Lot, his possessions, and also the women and the people. Then after Abram's return from the defeat, the slaughter of the kings, the king of Sodom went out to meet him in the valley of Shaddai. That is the king's valley. Melchizedek, king of Salem, ancient Jerusalem, brought out bread and wine for them. He was the priest of God most high. And Melchizedek blessed Abram and said, Blessed, joyful, favored be Abram by God most high, creator and possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed, praised, and glorify, and glorify God most high, who has given your enemies into your hand. And Abram gave him a tenth of all the treasure he had taken in battle. The king of Sodom said to Abram, Give me the people and keep the goods, the spoils of battle for yourself. For Abram said to the king of Sodom, I raised my hand and sworn oaths to the Lord God most high, the creator and possessor of heaven and earth, that I would take nothing that is yours from a thread to a sandal strap. So you would so that you could not say the king of Sodom had made Abram rich. I will take nothing except what my young men have eaten and the share of the spoils belonging to the men, my allies, who went with me, Anor, Escor, and Mamre. Let them take their share of the spoils. Now, I said that to say, really, this is a battle that he shouldn't be in. This is a self-induced affliction. Well, look how good God is. He takes 318 men out of his own house that he has trained. You know what, I, I, I really love the word of God. But I love when, when, when the word of God shows us not only the, the, the spiritual side, but the human side. And you know, sometimes we, we think about the characters in scripture, you know, uh, being so spiritual, they, they don't have any uh, real natural fiber to them. But, you know, uh, Abraham, you know, he's a general. He's not a man that just followed God. He's not a man that just had a son at a hundred years uh, of age and his wife at 90. I mean, this, this, this is a man's man. Okay? He brought his nephew. That's his brother's son. That's not hard to understand. And his nephew was cutting up everywhere he goes. You know, Abram's on the straight and narrow and a lot over there. 
You know, uh, you know, <laughs> and if you saw it in the natural, you see these two men, you know, looking like Arabs. You know, they got their heads all wrapped up on these beautiful, you know, Arabian horses. You know, that's, that's what they look like. You know, Abram is a well-to-do man. And you might think, like, you know that young man, boy, I bet you he's raking in that business with his head or something. <laughs> no, he's being carried. And so they get to arguing Abraham's, uh, you know, his employees get to, they, they, they get to in strife with, with lots of employees. And Abraham says, you know what, you, you just take what you want. Right. And boy, Lot looks up and he sees, ooh, he sees the Florida Keys. Oh, he sees, he sees that blue water. He, you know, he sees that nice land, and he ends up in Sodom and Gomorrah. And the Bible says that righteous man was vexed every day with the filthy conversation of the wicked. And now he's kidnapped, and here comes Uncle A. Come to get And it says, after the battle, Abram meets up with Melchizedek, who's a type of Christ. Yes. Amen? Amen. Uh, I'm not going to go into all the ramifications. I believe he met up with Jesus. Amen. Because over in the book of John, uh, uh, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees, and he says that, you know, before Abraham was, I am. And it lets us know that the, the bread and the wine represents communion. It represents the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. And so uh, 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 Abram, he, he meets up with Jesus. He gives him the tithe. And then Jesus gives him insight into the kingdom of God. Amen. Into the walk of faith. Amen. Into the uh, believe in God and, and how to believe God. He's getting a lesson after he gets. He gets a spiritual lesson. Revelation is downloaded into him. After he gets. You ain't got to pay for your blessing. Who don't know that? But why is given so big? Because God, God don't want to touch us. Right. Right. Somebody can you lend me $20 at the church? <laughs> <laughs> don't buy and say you don't have it. Just tell the truth. You didn't get the last money back. Right. Wow. Hallelujah. But we don't want to do that because we don't want everybody to tell So we say, you know. Y'all ready? Right? Well, sometimes we just don't want to. That's okay. That's your money. I'm giving people money and they got mad at me because they owe me. Who I thought, boy, if I would have known that you would have got nothing. You never said that? Yes, Lord. Okay. Some of y'all like like Mr. Essence. She's like, don't say that fast. Get off this one point today. <laughs> Given sexual 
you up for victories that are personal yes. that you weren't even supposed to be in. You're given what will help you out even in your self-induced affliction. Go to work and tell the boss all about himself. And wonder why you out the door in the next 30 days. But that wasn't right there. They, they, you know, that, they, they got me on something you don't know. They got you on your attitude. And they waited for something to pay. My Lord. Amen. That they could work your way out the door. Right. Right. There you go. But it was for your attitude. You know, many times the Lord uses affliction so we come to a place where we humble ourselves. Right. Now I just, I'm gonna close with this. Which is this, you know, we live in a we live in a society where you can do what you want to do. And you have your own fan club. You wanna wear your rebel hat and do you know you don't, you know, say whatever you do. You you got your own I would allow Facebook work, you know, but you, all you got to do is type in with your, you, all these people, what they do, what, what do they call them? Y'all stop and follow. Look at me, y'all run out the way. Followers. All your followers with your hey girl, that's right. Hey brother. That's right. All your rebellious followers will catch on. And many times, God uses affliction. He don't bring them. He don't bring them. That's right. The Bible says don't, let, don't ever say when you tempted, and you tempted of God. Because he cannot be tempted with evil. Neither does he tempt any man. That's not him. The thief is coming to steal, kill, and destroy and some of us have been saved a long time. And many times, we, we still can't discern what's the ministry of the thief and the ministry of Jesus. I want to go, but hey, Lord ain't put no sickness on you. He said, by his stripes you was healed. Yes, yes, yes. I know so, 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 so. And he never, he never got healed. I guess between him and God. Jesus. You know, some people are saying, well, just take me. I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. I've been traveling on this road, a road a long time. Amen. I gained heaven and, and, and left the world behind. I know my calling is election. Many things like that. They don't feel well no more. They just don't know. Jesus. Amen. You can't make that call. Yes, yes. They want to go home. They going on. Y'all remember, remember back in the day when your, uh, your siblings had to take care of you? The older ones? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I saw my mom. <laughs> I went to this uh, camp, summer camp, before my time. I was like, supposed to be, I'm seven, I'll be seven in October. Yeah. So, you know, it started from seven, but, you know, I'm six. Uh, my mom tells my brother, my oldest brother, you know, who's ten. Yeah. You better watch over him. So I'm home sick one night and I get on the phone and you know, make a click call. I said, Mom, I'm gonna come home. Where's your brother? I said, Oh Lord. <laughs> I don't know what she told him, but he watched over me the, the next two weeks very diligently. <laughs> now she said, now, but if you wanna come home, honey. Your dad and I will come up to the Poconos right now. Yeah. Are people sick in their body? The temple not well? They going through conflict in their mind? And it, they say, Lord, just take me home. I don't, I don't need one more treatment of chemotherapy. I don't want one more needle. I don't want to go into the hospital one more day. Lord, just come get me. And they're in the presence of the Lord. Amen. So you can't, don't say, 
it's not God's will to heal. Because, you know, sister so-and-so, who's a fine woman of God, or brother so-and-so, who's a wonderful man of God, didn't get their healing. They opted to go home. Let's close with this. Matthew 7, 25. I'm not going to apologize for not getting to all my notes. We just start back on that answer. Amen. But this this woman, and uh, Mark 7. I said Matthew? I'm sorry, Mark. Thank you. Mark chapter 7, beginning verse 25. I got to hear it. It says, uh, a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell out of his feet. The woman was a Greek, South Phoenician by nation. She besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled, for it's not meet to take the children's bread and cast it unto the dog. And she answered and said, Yes unto him. She answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord. Yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. And he said unto her, For this saying, Go thy way, the devil is gone out of thy door. Now this, this is it. Give me 60 seconds. Many times when we're afflicted, we allow ourselves to get puffed up instead of coming love. Why is this happening to me? All those years I don't serve God. <laughs> My family wouldn't be saved if one day I'd be an angelist. And my brother acting all, uh, you know, like he all up in the holy. I got him saved. Yeah. If I know he was an alcoholic. Well, darling, that's not going to help you right now. You need to humble yourself. And come on, get your healing. Because that's, right. that's first and foremost. And telling everybody what you done done and, and giving your spiritual re resume is not going to help you. Right now, at this time of affliction, we just need to say help, Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes. 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 Amen. My daughter is grievously vexed. I don't know what to do. That's right, Lord. I ain't been under your service. I know you've been, I know you've been preaching all over. I've heard about you. I haven't been the one, but now I'm in trouble, and now I need your help. And, 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 and even in the natural, these little old dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. All I'm asking is for a crumb. And it says, for this saying, but it's interesting, that word in the Greek, saying, it just, it's just not verbalization. What he's saying is for this disposition of heart because you made things turn the way they should turn. Because you humbled yourself in my presence. The manifestation has come to you. Go on home. Your daughter's free. What's that scripture that says, you know, what, what really does the Lord require of us? You know, but to do justice and to love mercy and to walk humbly with the Lord our God. What does he really require of us? So, when you give, that's your start as a lifestyle. It goes to God first. Well, I'm going to give my ties over here to Sister So and so. She's struggling. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. No, that's awesome. 
Right. That's good. Now, I first did that when I first got saved and saw you. I didn't know that. But the tide is gone. Yeah. That's first. Right. When you pray, you should be praying the word. Yes, yes. To pray the word. Lord, your word says this. I'm getting in line with it. Give me revelation because I don't understand it, but I'm getting in line with it and I'm going to start praying this way because you said it. Amen. Amen. And then when you fast, if you know you need to fast, see, you should have been to shut it off. But if you, <laughs> if you know you're in Facebook so much, you should have been to shut that off. We talk about food. We talk about things that make the body weak so that the spirit can rise. When you give, when you pray, when you fast, put these in order, and you'll begin to see manifestation of the God kind. Because now we're in line with Matthew 6.33. Seek first the kingdom in righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. And that's for the pastor, the elders, mm -hmm. all of ministry heads. That's for everybody in the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. My time is up. I thank you for yours. Somebody give God praise today in the house of God. Come on, bless them. This is not a congregation. That's a strong bless them. Come on, bless them.